Hi everyone and uh, welcome to yet another Wanna Go Biking production. So today is quite a windy day, uh, wind from the northeast, or for four I think, yet again. And uh, that means that I'm heading that way. So that gives me the opportunity to go ahead and visit a few cities that uh, are in, in that area, uh, namely Appingedam and Del Sel. Uh, I think there's quite a few nice uh, things to, to tell you about, um, uh, about those cities when I get there. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've, I've planned um, a 100k trip, which is the longest in quite a while, in maybe six months or so. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right, um, see you later, bye. Very windy. I've got to put down almost 300 watts to only do 23k an hour. Oh, tough going. So, just arrived in uh, Appingedam after a, a fierce battle against the wind, but I, uh, I prevailed. And uh, Appingedam is uh, known here because it has, well, we can't just quite see them. It has some hanging gardens over uh, the river. So uh, let's just go and check it out. I, I think there's only three, so it's not exactly Venice, but it's uh, sure is pretty. Certainly with the uh, springtime around the corner. They have three hanging kitchens. Quite congenious though. <laughs> cool. Time for a, a mini break. I've just uh, entered Delfzijl, which is pretty much bordering on Appingedam, where I've just been. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I hope to be able to find a, a statue of a rather famous person. Um, I haven't seen it before, so I'm quite anxious to find out where it is and uh, what it's like. I'll tell you more about it when I'm there. And then I'll be looking for the railway station, which is only two or three years younger, I believe, than the uh, railway station that I just showed you in Groningen. But uh, I've not ever been there before, so uh, that should be fun. All right, see you in a bit. So behind me you see the, uh, the statue of uh, Maigre, which is of course the fictitious character written by uh, the Belgian writer Georges Simenon, who uh, came here in Del Sale in 1925, I think it says here. Yeah. And uh, he was quite the adventurer, Georges Simenon. He, um, he traveled by boat through France and Belgium and, and Holland and uh, Germany. And apparently his boat had, uh, was in need for some repairs. So he came here, and whilst he was waiting for the for the repairs to be done, he uh, came up with this character, uh, probably based on some local figures, or probably already had um, you know character in mind. But anyways, the story is that he pretty much conceived Maigret uh, here in Delfzijl, which is kind of nice. He was quite the uh, prolific uh, writer. 
I think he made, a, I don't know, 80 or so novels. I think my mom would know because she's got them all. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so he was quite a prolific writer and um, one of his first ones was called Megret in Holland. So he would, would have come from the train station where I'll be going next and um, stayed in the hotel here obviously. And then I came up with uh, Megre. I, th I, I do believe actually there was a recent version with Rowan Atkinson. Now I absolutely adore Rowan Atkinson in all his uh, incarnations, but I can't see him as Megre. And that's nothing to do with his acting skills or anything. It's just the language. Yeah, Megre should be French, not English. That's my opinion anyways. I loved uh, Bruno Cremer who did it I think in the 80s or 90s and uh, there's probably some oldies out there as well. Um, so that's a uh, cultural highlight of today, at least it is for me. Now uh, another hour or so of solid headwinds to Termentazel where I hope to be able to, to have some coffee and cake and then uh, a nice tailwind back home. So that would be nice. Alright, see you in a bit. Bye bye. So this would be where uh, Megre would have uh, stepped off the train here in Delfel. Unfortunately, uh, the interior, uh, the waiting room is, is closed for some bizarre reason. That's a shame because I would have loved to uh, see it. But uh, yeah, nothing you can do. So that was uh, Delfel in Megre. I think ah, there's the um, dike over there. Just have a quick look at um, the Ames River. So uh, see you when I get there. Oh, you fooled me. It seems like... Oh, open. What do you know? This really didn't look like I could pass through, but apparently I can. Right. 6.8k to, I hope, Tervantazel, because uh, I really could do with a coffee. Otterdam had to disappear in order to make place for a wider dike here and uh, the possibility to have this rather expanse industrial area here. I've just uh, had 5k of just uh, power plants and, and cables and pipelines and all that so but pretty much as a remembrance to the village that disappeared they've uh, constructed this uh, piece of art which I really like. Let's just have a quick look. The new hand of Otterdam. Oh, it's even in English. Of course it was stolen. My word. <laughs> oh my god, we are such an... Oh, F up people sometimes. So I reckon they've moved these uh, tombstones here. Oh, that's a village in the hand. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Well made. How cool is that? Right, let's just uh, get a move on to uh, Termentor's Ale because I need coffee and cake. See you in a bit. Loads of birds. Hey guys. Take care. I 
instrument as well and a nice coffee and cake so now uh, let's go and see if we can uh, find some seals because there's an overlook point uh, seven eight nine k from here that seems to have some seals i've never seen them been there before but uh, you never know i might get lucky all right see you there well there's a few uh, bunkers here Remnants thereof. I think we are standing on the place of uh, yet another abandoned or sunken little village. Liberationdeeps.com. Okay. Right. So we've got exactly one cannon here. Well, that should suffice against the Russians, certainly. Let's try and avoid war, eh? Better, I think. Now, this this might be an outlook point for seals, I don't know. I'll just have to check it because uh, I can't really tell, but well, just have a quick look. Well, it appears I don't even have to turn the engine on for the drone to work. <laughs> wow, amazing. Right, that's enough wind for now. I think I have 2 3 k to go with a slight headwind and then I should be sailing home. That should be fun. All right, see you Well, fair to say you won't see too many tourists here. This uh, land is, uh, is deemed boring by, by many people, really. And uh, maybe that's true. There really is not much to see, but that's the whole point, isn't it? <laughs> we are such a planned country, every millimeter is spoken for. But here at least you have uh, a few, which I like, but uh, to each their own. So uh, I'll just um, go on. I know I'll go to Slochteren in the end, but uh, in between I have no idea what I've created actually, so well, we'll see together, won't we? Well, there's a body of water here, and uh, maybe this is a nature reserve for birds or something. Hondhalsermeer. Lots of birds. Well, that's cool. Let's see if we can spot some. Well, I can't find any birds. <laughs> it's a good spot for a little break. Let's see if we can still get in. I don't think so. Yeah, we are in Slochteren. So, and this is the Freilemaborg. Uh, Very pretty, I think. I haven't been here in a while, but um, there's usually quite a few exhibitions in the garden, which is quite ex expansive. Uh, maybe there's some artwork there to be seen. So, I'll just have a quick look around because it's already quarter to six, so I have an hour left of light. I uh, want to make the best of that, but uh, let's have a Look at the fight I'm about.
it's so quiet here. <coughs> Maybe actually the entrance is closed and they forgot to tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's just supposed to keep the tree from falling, right? Wow. What is that? <laughs> Copper chamber. Hmm. Kind of funny. So uh, Slochteren in the Netherlands is uh, famous for two things. The Freilemaarborg that you see behind me is one of them. And the other is uh, the gas extraction from the, from the ground here that's been going on since the 60s, I believe. And that's made us quite rich, except for this province. And uh, yeah, that's a political statement. So there's been quite a few earthquakes in this region and uh, people feel and are not being well compensated for the uh, damages. So uh, the trust in the... Uh, the government and gas winning is uh, at an absolute zero right now which of course is not very handy because we could do with a bit of more gas now that uh, Russia is uh, acting up and uh, yeah so there you have it that's Slotheran in a nutshell um, it is getting colder and colder the sun is about to set in half an hour or so so I'll better get a move on and um, yeah I'll see you in the next one so uh, as always, enjoy your rides, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Alright, see ya, bye bye.